I request you to be seated. And uh, the good news is that the tea, coffee, and the snacks that were being served earlier will continue after we finish. So stay on till the end, and we look forward to having a great time this evening. We'd like to begin by asking everyone to be thorough to come up and do a short prayer, after which we'll get this function on the road. Jenny, will you please come up? Please come up. 
established in 2004, Nyomi Books is an internationally reputed publishing house with nearly 500 titles. Their focus is to produce illustrated books on art, architecture, history, spirituality and all aspects connected with culture and heritage. They have a signature bookstore in Calcutta which is launched in 2018. On World Hindi Day, they launched their latest imprint of Bahu dedicated to Hindi titles, the mission of Yogi Books, free publishing within reach. We present, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Pikachu. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you all this evening at the launch of a much needed book on the Parsi community of Calcutta. I would like to say a special word of welcome to the distinguished members, Mr. Avik Sarkar, Mr. Nasir Tankariwala, Mr. Baj Mrs. Balaji Karkaria, Mr. Sam Balsara, and the author, Mrs. Fuji Numi Mehta. Nyogi Books has been at the hangar of preserving Indian culture, history, and heritage. And in the last 15 years, out of 600 titles, we have published at least two are based on Parsis. One is Wit and Wisdom, Picking from the Parsi Punch, is the name of the book, written by Professor Mushurul Hassan. A book which was a silent contributor to the freedom struggle of India. And the other is a biography of Field Marshal Sam Manikshan, perhaps the most well-known Parsi in India, Arthur Jamsaji Tata. I am happy to tell you that both of these books have got an overwhelming positive response. The book, Pioneering Parsis of Calcutta, being launched today is yet another effort by Neogi Books to document and thereby preserve for posterity the history of Parsi stalwarts of Easterdia in the city of Calcutta. The book has been painstakingly researched, meticulously edited, designed and crafted with elegance and sophistication, a kind of work ethic that we bring to all Neogi Books publications. I would like to take this opportunity to share with you a little personal detail about the influence of Parsi I have had on my life. One of my greatest role model was Puchi Mehta's father, the late Rusi Bajaji Gimi, who was a towering influence in my life. I grew up watching him sign single-handedly transform outdoor advertising in India with Selvel Syndicate, which is today is globally known as Selvel Advertising, and has been relentlessly championing social causes. His body of work continues to inspire me. I also feel inspired by all the great Parsis unmatched in business and ethics, who have played prominent roles by giving back to society and by helping one and all, regardless of class, caste, creed, or color. May I also mention here that beyond business, in the field of literature, one of my most favorite author is also a Parsi named Rohintan Mistri. At least two of his books, such a long journey and a fine balance, Though read long ago, still remains me, remains with me because of their creative representation of Parsi life and character. The present book is a tribute to the pioneering Parsis towards the building of the city of Kolkata. There are many illustrious Parsis mentioned in this book, such as Rustamji, Kawasi, Banaji, the first Parsi to bring his entire family including women and children, to the city of Calcutta. Seth Jamsetji Premji Madam, one of the pioneers of Indian cinema, who also assisted the needy 
and was involved in a number of philanthropic endeavors. Rustamji Dunji Roy Bairamji Mehta recognized as tower of strength by the Parsi community of Calcutta and Sir Piroj Kutsesji Chetna, one of the most famous Parsi sons of Calcutta, who epitomized remarkable success attained by greed and perseverance. These are just a few of the pioneering Parsis which are in the book. Their initial struggle, success stories, their high and low, their reformist view, their penchant for taking great risk, and their social commitment and responsibility are narrated in great detail in this book. The rare archival photographs, extensive private letters, press clippings, detailed character extracts from landmark judgments and cartoons highlighting the mood of the times, compliments and enrich the book further. The author, Prochi Mehta, is a highly successful sports person and has won 52 gold medals in international, at International Athletic Meet. This, this book, a veritable treasure trove of facts about the rich Parsi heritage of Kolkata can be likened to a gold medal by virtue of its scope and achievement. There is a genuine dearth of good, well researched books that document our heritage and history. This book promises to make the past an open book for the Parsi community in Calcutta and the industrial reader for, as Shakespeare says, what's past is prologue. We would be foolish to forget the lessons of history. With these words, I once again welcome you all to the release function of this excellent book, Pioneering Parsis of Calcutta by Mrs. Pochi Numi Mehta. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Yogi. When you wrote through the book, the one thing that hits you immediately is the fact that we were all born a couple of generations late. <laughs> Looking at my own great-grandfather, who they call the pioneer of the film industry in India, who was, to me, Martin Sorcese, <coughs> and uh, all the great directors rolled into one. We came about a hundred years too late to enjoy what he set up, but at least it's on record, and that's thanks to Prochi. I'd now like to welcome on stage, ladies and gentlemen, our chief guest for this evening's release of the book, a man who doesn't need much of an introduction, but I'd love to leave this introduction on him. Please welcome on stage Mr. Abhik Sarkar. <laughs> Vice Chairman and Editor Emiratus of the ABP Group, he was ranked as one of the most powerful Indians by Indian Express. Many a journalist has tried to decode Abhik Babu, only to be politely and definitely told by his secretary, Diane, that they should refer to Nicholas Coleridge's book on Indian media barons called Paper Tiger for information on him. Coleridge was the president of Condinas International and he interviewed Abhik Babu and wrote about him in his book. Abhik has been described most aptly as India's most sophisticated media proprietor. Abhik Sarkar has also been regarded as one of the most intellectual editors in India. He started as an understudy to the legendary Harold Evans, modeled his English newspaper, The Telegraph, after the British Daily Telegraph, and The Telegraph's daily supplement, T2, was named because of its eponymous British counterpart. The ad tag line for the group's newspaper, Ananda Bazaar Patrika, is Ananda Bazaar Ki Bolche. What is Ananda Bazaar saying about it? Avik Babu played a very active role in setting up Penguin India, an arm of Penguin Books. He partnered with Rupert Murdoch to star, star Ananda and now ABB Ananda. Avik Babu has created many legends and in the process, ladies and gentlemen, 
the legend himself, Avik Sarkar. Can I request you to say a few words? Thank you for your kind words. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, friends, and the distinguished Parsi members of the Parsi community in Calcutta. We often, and certainly I did, a guilt that we did not know much about the other communities in Calcutta. I always thought that we Bengalis are very insular, very much immersed in ourselves, in our own passions, and never bothered to understand the other communities who actually contributed to the building of the cities. The Parsis, the Armenians, and even the Marwaris. While talking to Mrs. Mehta, I was very relieved to learn that even the Parsis know very little about themselves. The book is a valiant effort to bridge that gap. This is the book, what it academically would be called a micro history. India currently, we are going through a phase which might be called the golden age of history. Books about histories are being written. Not all of them are good. Serious academic books, but also a large number of popular books. So if you go to the airport shop and you'll see that, you know, so many new authors, so many new subjects, every king, queen, every, everybody getting a book done. Indians are also increasingly writing about themselves, the memoirs and the books, and thus contributing to the substance of history. are writing books. I think Bakshi is writing one book. And my another colleague in Delhi, a journalist in the Indian Express called, called Kumi Kapoor, very fine journalist, she's also writing another book. I do think, all, however, apart from journalists the writing accounts, they do feel a void. But what the community needs is somebody, a preferably somebody outside the community, writing a professional academic book. You know, someone like Ram Guha or that sort of a thing. And when I talk with my past friends, I'm surprised to find that they are also familiar with the anecdotes and legends of the community, but very few have any little explanation of why that came to be. I was just asking Bachi that would it be right to say 
the egg is the national dish of passes in India. And she says most probably, because in everything we do, we put egg. But how did this come out? This was a break in the tradition from the Zoroastrian community, which came here, and it adapted local traditions. But no local traditions, no local community in India is, places that much of emphasis on eggs as do the Parsis. Secondly, whenever a religion has traveled, it has taken the use of the, the local environment and depending on how you feel, you might say that it has got enriched or you might argue that it has got distorted. See, the obvious example is Buddhism in Tibet because it got influenced by a local religion called Bon, so much so that one of the Dalai Lamas had to import a pandit from India to teach them pure Buddhism. I am told, and do correct me if I am wrong, that Zoroastrianism in Iran and Zoroastrianism in India are not always the same. So there have been a deviation. Maybe the deviations are for the better. But it would be interesting to see, you know, how these deviations came around and what are the, what are the deviations. Passes are one community which are genuinely well liked by every other community in India. And I think the only liking is not enough. There is a need to know, rediscover Zoroastrianism in, in today's world. And to look at the, the Persian culture and history, how it has evolved, how it has changed, or how it has got distorted in India. I think books like Mrs. Mehta are very valuable contribution in the sense that it puts on record at least some facts, data and anecdotes. Unlike other communities, the Parsis hitherto have been shy of writing their memoirs. I had asked my friends, uh, Rusi Modi, that you know, why doesn't he write his memoirs? You know, if Ratan Tata were to write his memoirs, it would be a, a rich, full of anecdotes, you know, or even Cyrus Mystery, or Nasli Wadiya, you know. Fali Nariman has written a book, but that book is uh, more on law and national issues rather than on his community. I think for that reason alone, I think all of us here needs to be grateful to Mrs. Mehta. Thank you. And We'd now like to call up Sam Balsara, Noshir Tankariwala, Bachi Karkaria, and Prochi Mehta, who along with Avik Sarkar will release the book, Pioneering Parsis of Calcutta.
that, ladies and gentlemen, was the official release of the book. A quick introduction now to our members on the panel. We start with a man who's been the doyen of Indian advertising, Mr. Sam Balsara. Founder, chairman, and managing director of Madison World and Madison Communication. In his earlier years, he worked as a marketing executive at Sarabhai's and Cadbury, and later switched to advertising, working with Hindustan Thompson. In 1986, Sam decided to work on his own and started his advertising agency, Madison, on 21st March, 1988. He served as the president of the Advertising Club of Bombay from 1989 to 1992 and as chairman of Advertising Standards Council of India from 2000-2001, president of the Advertising Agencies Association of India and chairman of AAA Advertising Association of India. The number of awards that he's received in the field are amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, we give to you Mr. Sam Balsar. Does she need much of an introduction to you people sitting here? My first recollections of Bachi go back to the Parsi elocution contest. She had a big advantage, she was older than me. She grew up here next door to the Banaji Akyari in the printing press, which was called Now Rose. Her parents ran it and edited this Gujarati Weekly, which was run for so many years from this house. She herself has served as editor to the Times of India and is best known for her satirical column, Erratica. She's written the book, Dare to Dream, A Life of M.S. Oberoi, and she recently wrote a book on the Nanavati affair in hot blood. She is a recipient of the U.S. Mary Morgan Hewlett Award for Lifetime Achievement. She is on the advisory board of the National AIDS Control Organization and the Indian AIDS Initiative of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. She is now a media trainer, and it began with the World Editor Forum's master classes for editors in Hanoi and Cairo. She is now designated media trainer for the Times Group. Ladies and gentlemen, our very own Pachi Kakari. Tankariwala, Managing Director of Moran Tea Company Limited and Chairman of the Tea Research Association of India. He was Honorary Council General for Norway in West Bengal and has been conferred the title Officer First Class equivalent to an OBE, Order of the British Empire. He was President of Tolliganj Club and represented East India at the apex body in the Gulf Union. He is a member of the Minorities Commission West Bengal. He is also the senior trustee of the late Airbat D.B. Mehta, Zoroastrian Anjuman Shadaran, an amazing storyteller recalling incidents in minute detail. We are waiting for him to write his life story. Ladies and gentlemen, Noshir Tankariwala. <laughs> so before we hand you over to the panel, ladies and gentlemen, we're doing two short readings, so you'll have to still put up with me for a little while before I hand over. And then I'm going to call up Guli Mehta, and she is going to read a small excerpt for you. Around 1490. 
With their prolonged stay with the Hindus, the Parsis had become almost like them. The males used to put red pagris and dhotis, and their names were mostly Hindu names such as Hasji, Fakir, Jogia, Nasran, and Dhana. The ladies had such names as Malanbai, Zilibai, Tanabai. They used to dress and put on decorative ornaments like those of Hindu ladies, and the dead Parsis even used wooden beers for carrying the dead and used to help in carrying corpses. Changa Shah helped in preserving the rich Parsi heritage and after first satisfying the economic needs of the indigent Parsis from the neighboring villages, he started restoring their faith in their glorious and ancient religion and put them back on the religious path. The well-known French traveler and scholar, Abraham Hyacinth Anquitel du Perron, wrote the following about Changesha. There appeared afterwards at Nausari a rich Parsi named Changesha a faithful observer of Zoroastrian law. He distributed his wealth among the poor, provided the Parsis with kastis and sadras, and endeavored to bring back those whom ignorance and trouble had led into many errors to the exact practice of the Zoroastrian law. To succeed in this, he applied to the Dastuls of Kerman, consulting them on different points of the Zoroastrian religion neglected in Gujarat. So that was a short extract. And now I'd like to call up Guli Mehta. Sunset. I read out aloud the pledge to the Zora faith. 
in French, and then the ceremony began. Ratan and I, sitting side by side, and the Dastus started to pray and showering us with rice. It took about 25 minutes. When everybody except the family and Mr. Ganga had left, we all drank champagne and then quietly returned home. This was, this was from the original French text in 1903. Thank you, buddy. And just before we hand over to the panelists, you're always reminded of an old story in an old Irun restaurant in Bombay where a young Gujarati who wasn't supposed to be non-vegetarian walked in and asked the owner for a chicken patty. And this was plonked before him and he dug his teeth into it and went through the whole patty and found there was no chicken in it. So he called the Irun owner and asked him, he says, I asked you for a chicken patty, there's no chicken in this. So he picked him up and he walked him up to the main counter where there were these big boxes of Dinsa Petit biscuits. And he points to it and he says, I to naam chai. He said, what do you mean naam chai? He says, yes, you look at this chicken patty, it's just a name. Dinsa petit no biscuit masu, dinsa petit besa. <laughs> so with that, and hoping that this goes in the same way, it's over to Sam to moderate and take you through what promises to be a very interesting evening. Thank you very much. commercial person like me and that to advertising to boots doing in the literary and cultural capital of India at a book launch. Well, I thought I should say that my family and our author's family actually, we jointly own a sports management company that was originally founded by Sunil Gavaskar. And that sort of explains my presence here this evening. So, whilst we have a very eminent panel, and the panel has been introduced to you, I do want to take this opportunity to give you my own take on this panel, if you will. Should we start with you, but you know, we'll start with Prochi since it's her day. So, as I see Prochi, I wonder if anybody in Calcutta, or in fact anybody in India, has not heard of Selwell splashed all across our roads for decades. But Prochi really, to me, is much more than a businesswoman. She is, as the book, and its flap talks about a daughter, a wife, a mother, a grandmother, a school leader, a topper, and a very accomplished sports person as we just heard with over 50 gold medals. She's also been the first lady president of your very prominent Parsi club. I think she says researching for this book has changed her perception of our Parsi community. Well, it's certainly changed, reading her book has certainly changed my perception of the role of Calcutta Parsis in our Parsi society. I must confess that I never knew that Calcutta played such an important role amongst the Parsis in India. Let me now move on to my Bombay friend, Bachi. So Bachi, of course, needs no introduction, I believe, to all of you, having grown up in Calcutta. 
But as I see it, you know, many in this world can claim very good observation powers, but very few can express them satirically like Pachi can. And I'm hoping that she will regale us this evening with a few of her satirical takes, not just on Prochi and Lumi, but all the Parsis of Calcutta. So, Bachi, I'm putting you on the mat. I'm sure all of you have read many of her columns, Eratica. But Bachi, as we just heard, is not just about satire. She had the exalted position of the editor of the Times of India. And she's also written at least two books that I know of. And for one of those book launches on Nanavati, I was there when the book was launched. And I remember she put the redoubtable Ram Jait Malani on the mat. But she remember that. So, now this I don't know if many of you in Calcutta know, and Bachi I don't think wants me to remind you about it, but I must tell you, Bachi also runs an agony aunt column in Bombay, and I'm not going to pass up this opportunity of getting some good tips from her about my sagging love life. <laughs> Let me now come to our last panelist, Noshir, the youngest member at AP in our panel, who of course we heard has had an illustrious professional career with Baker T. And uh, now, of course, is happily the trustee of the Arthur Shadran in Calcutta. He's also been president of the Tolly Gunch Club as his gate displays. Noshin is not one to get daunted by any health issues, of which I believe he has many, and that does not come in the way of having a good round of golf three times a week or passing up an opportunity for a good healthy debate that we are about to embark on. So I thought we would handle this panel discussion in two parts. The first part we could deal with, you know, the pioneering Parsis of Calcutta, which this book sort of uh, title is. And for the second part, we'll go into the slightly more delicate subject of rights of intermarried Parsi girls and their children and what should be their rights. I must say I was surprised to again see the long litany of pioneering Parsis that have passed through Calcutta and reading about them in Proji's book. I was even more surprised when I looked up the census to see how many Parsis would there be in Calcutta to find that out of the total Parsis of about 57,000 according to the 2011 census, only 291 currently live in West Bengal. So I'm sure even 100 years ago there couldn't have been more than 1,000. It was really credible and an eye-opening fact that out of those thousand Parsis, we had so many that Prochi could list in her book who were men of essence with something that Prochi could write about several decades later. So Prochi, since you're closest to the subject, and I think we're all getting nervous about the difficult facts that you put together in this book. So you get started. Tell us, out of the many that you have written about, who are the two or three most fascinating stories that you came across in terms of ambition, adventure, indomitable spirit? 
amongst the Calcutta Parsis of yester year. The first person I do. I must interrupt you. I think we Bombay Parsis like to think that it was Sora Pochkanawala of the Central Bank who was the pioneer of the bank. So when I go back, I'll correct the impression of the Bombay Parsis. So we started the insurance system based in one aspect of life, which he has not touched. Because of the